Hey everyone, it is another awesome episode of Poetry Worldwide and we are bringing hometown poets to you. So just from season one till now, I have a commitment to bring Memphis to the world. So last numbers check, we are broadcasting to 40 million people, not, not billion yet, but 40 yeah. million people. So at this time, we just want to say thank you to WYTV7 for believing in us poets, artists, hip hop artists, uh, people who have creative souls. We thank you for this program. And I saw this young talent on Facebook actually freestyling with his daughter. And I said, well, hey, we got to get this guy on the show. Uh, he has a very, very good message. And I think there is more of a need to have our young black men out here with a positive message. I mean, we're, we're either dying or getting killed or something or the stereotypes are coming up. So we want to give you at least one positive example of a guy just trying to keep his family together and, and, and get this money on the poetry tip or on the hip hop tip. So yeah. without any further ado, please welcome Mr. Damien Griffin to the show. Man, what's going on? How you doing? Thank you. Nothing much. Just um, grinding, trying to get, you know, fulfill my purpose in life. Definitely. That's what's up. That's what's up. And for, for anybody who is not familiar in Memphis, I think everybody in Memphis is trying to do that now, you know, however we can do it. So we just appreciate you uh, being on the show. So we're just going to vibe. We, you know, we want, we got a lot of people excited to get to know about you and your art. So definitely let's get started. So we always ask every artist that we have, mm -hmm. how did they get their start? So, Mr. Griffin, how did you get your start in writing? Um, it's a funny story. I actually, I have a twin brother, so when we was younger, um, we grew up off of a lot of secular music. Uh, Three Six Mafia, if you ever heard of them, uh, Play or Fly, uh, just, just different people uh, based in Memphis specifically. So growing up, my uncles used to um, have us to recite rap music we would listen to in the house. Uh, it, it was just a thing we grew up off of. Uh, but when we was 11, me and my twin brother, we was like 11 years old, um, they wrote this rap for us. And it was, we was talking about guns and money, just stuff we didn't know anything about, just things we were seeing around us and in our environment. Uh, we recorded it on a tape cut a tape player, a tape recorder, old school tape recorder, a uh, tape recorder that you had to press record and play at the same time to uh, record yourself. So um, we, we we recognized somewhere down the line that we actually had this natural gift, even though it was instilled in us to rap and to recite other people rap, we realized that we had uh, this actual gift ourselves. But uh, we was you know, we, we the rap we grew up off of, we ended up reciprocating it in our own rap. So, you know, here we are, 16, 17 years old, talking about getting money, killing people, and uh, doing all these type of things. So, uh, so, so that's what I grew up off of. But uh, it wasn't until I got stage in 2014 to when I was like, okay, you know, I've been rapping uh, this stuff about guns, violence, uh, sex, all type of things. I need to change what I'm rapping about because my lifestyle is now different. Now what I'm rapping about has to be different as well because I was rapping for the devil for so many years, so many years. And uh, when I gave my life to the Lord in 2014, I was like, you know what, what, I, what I'm rapping about has to also change because I understand that my old life, I was rapping about guns, violence, drugs, different things. Now, now that I have this new life, I have to, change what I'm rapping about. I have to now rap for the glory of God because he was the one who gave me the gift in the first place. So that's how that's how that happened. Definitely. Well that that's a powerful story right there. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely um uh, i there's a saying on Facebook that says uh I I love Jesus and trap music and I kinda do. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kinda kinda Not going it now. But um but yeah, I'm definitely familiar with uh, you know, Project Pat. Um, I actually met Player Fly, uh, Three Six Mafia, you know, all everybody. So um definitely familiar with that. Um, you know, being, you know, uh Memphis born and raised. But but that you said a you said a very positive thing, a very something that I picked up on 
was that authenticity. And uh, mm. especially in the rap game, you see a lot of uh, a lot of artists, uh, kind of like the guy on the Eight Mile. You know, he's going to a private school like Briarcrest or something, and he right. raps about you know sets and stuff like right. that. So it's just kind of like your art has to match who you are, and that and that's the biggest thing, guys. If if you're an artist. If you're a young artist out there, be authentic. I mean, if you're from that space, you know, rap what you know. But this man right here, he made the transition right. from secular to, you could say, Christian rap because it, it matched who he was. And then he wanted to use his gift to glorify God. And, that, and that's the root of it. So that, that's definitely a, a good story. And from here... If you could go into a little bit more, what motivates you to to write to write hip hop to to just start rhyming in a more positive way? Um, of course, number one, God. You know, just um, God and the way He called us to live as uh, Christians. Uh, for if you're a believer of uh, the Word, you know, uh, it says when you are in Christ, you're a new creature. Uh, behold, all things have passed away; the new is here. So, uh, my number one, the number one reason is God. Um, number two for me is my daughter. Uh, I have a young daughter who's looking up to me. She's six years uh, six years of age, um, and I definitely don't want her to grow up into uh, into a negative environment or have negative things instilled into her. I believe that if negative things influence us, how much more will uh, something positive influence us? Um, you saw the rap video where we have. Uh, the Bible says to train up a child in the way she should go or he should go and they will not depart from it. So a lot of times she's looking at my life. She's looking at what, what is, what is my dad listening to? What is he watching? You know, what, what do he do on a day to day basis? So I have her um, looking up to me as well. So I have to, I have to be that example uh, of a king demand for her as well as uh, for myself and others who's watching my life uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, this, that's definitely my number two, my two influences is God, number one, and then two, my daughter uh, who's watching me every single day. And uh, I want to say this, the thing that really blesses me is uh, I'm the father who doesn't want to force anything on, on my child. So just because I rap, you don't have to do that just because I do. You know, if you want to uh, be a ballerina, I support that. Rather you want to be a... a, a a teacher, whatever she want to be in life, I definitely support it. But I believe that what I do is it, it rubs off on her so much. And I see that she actually enjoys uh, enjoys rapping about God. And then she's conscious of uh, what she's talking about. And that's another thing that blesses me. So when we hear, or if she hears something bad on the radio, she's like, Daddy, I heard a bad song. I had to cover my ears. So it's things like that that really, really pushes me and motivates me to say, okay, you know, I'm doing something, uh, something worthy of doing because, you know, my daughter's looking at it. Uh, others are looking at it. And then now my daughter is doing it. So kids are encouraged in uh, saying her lyrics. I had one guy, uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I got a job. I have to be in super early, two or three o'clock in the morning. He's reciting my daughter's lyrics. And these are the type of people that will probably never step foot in the church. So um, sometimes we are the only Jesus that people will see. So if you're looking at a rap video and that's the only time you're hearing about God, I'm consciously thinking about things like that. And for people to recite lyrics that I've wrote or that my daughter has came up with at three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, okay, that's that's pure motivation. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, okay, God, I see, I see what's going on. I see what you're doing. So it, it's it's confirmation that I'm walking in my purpose even more when things like that happen. Definitely. Man, well that that's a powerful story. And and guys, if you have not seen uh inter well not an interview, but if you have not seen the videos with uh Damien and his daughter, I will definitely share it on the Poetry Worldwide page and my personal page. I mean it it's it's great stuff and it's and it is lessons that children and adults some adults that we've seen still need, you know, clean your room, be good to your parents, right. pray every day, brush your teeth. I mean, all of that. that mm, that's, absolutely. That's, that's good knowledge. That's <laughs> stuff that we need. And and it, it, it blessed me. It caught my attention. And just the, the message was just so pure. And I think with everything going on now, 
we we need we need to get back to basics because I think I think you know with all of the iPads and the computers and the cell phones sometimes people forget to go back to to the basics and right. and and that's what you all's raps do and it gets as you said it even gets adults even realize okay I think I might have skipped a step or you know, if this child knows this, how much more do I need to know it? So that that's that's very something, you know, that that's very powerful. So with with your with your individual uh, you know, hip hop and and you and your daughter, what other types of subjects are are you finding yourself talking about now? Is God leading you in a particular direction to talk about things? <laughs> Uh, well, well, what what you mean as far as that? Uh, can you elaborate a little more on the question? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, do you like? Do you feel like the Holy Spirit is is pulling you to maybe you know talking about uh, self love or loving God more? You know, things like that. What what sort of subjects do you find yourself rapping about when you do rap? Um. Um. I, I know one one thing. Uh, I do rap about uh, love. It's in my first album. Um, I was talking about real love and <laughs> just talking about what, what is what is real love. So um, my first album came out actually around this time last year, October the 14th, 2018. Uh, it's called Chosen. It is, uh, it's, it's out everywhere. Uh, if you're looking for it, I go by DC. Um, and one particular song I talk about um, real love. I mean, what, what is real love? Because I came from my home. Uh, my mom got married. My dad. Uh, got killed tragically at the age of one or two, uh, so he got shot. Um, so I didn't have that that luxury of having my bi- biological father in my life, which I feel like he would have been, you know, he would have been instrumental in my life had he still been alive today. So a lot of times I'm uh, I'm, I'm thinking on love and, and topics. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics. I, I think it comes from a childhood thing to where. Uh, in the house, uh, growing up in the home, my mom got married in '01 uh, to this guy we really, uh, we really loved. He was our stepfather, and um, they had an awesome relationship. But somewhere down the line, a year or two later, they ended up parting ways. And uh, after the marriage, so after they got married, they they've been together for years. Then they got married and uh, separated like a year or two later. And I've always had this question in my head. What is what is love? What is what is real love? Uh, if you can commit to somebody, but then um, you walk away. And since childhood, there was something that that really, you know, that they put a damper on my spirit. That you know, something I've always wondered. Because if you say you love somebody, but you leave, then what what is it? You know. So in my album, I talked about real love. And that's one topic I do find myself talking about. Uh, a lot. I guess it's because of uh, what I experienced growing up. Uh, and I was talking about, you know, well, what's love? What's love if, if we can leave a person and say we commit our lives to them? And then as I thought about it, I was like, you know, at the at the, at the the end of the day, Jesus Christ is that, it's that real love. So this thing that I've been searching for since I was young, this thing that I've been hoping that would be filled, this void that I was hoping that would be filled in my heart, um, it, it's really, it's really Jesus. He's really the love that I've been looking for because I found that I've been in several relationships just looking for love when really all the time that love was really, really God. And I didn't understand that until I really got a relationship with Christ. So a lot of times I'm, I'm talking on uh, topics of love or relationships or just having a relationship with God because, um, because I know somebody is where I used to be. So I do discuss that a lot and just, just try to witness to people that, you know, you know, you don't you don't need love or validation in a relationship when God has already supplied you with both of which, but it would take having a relationship with him uh, in order to know that. So I'm often talking about relationships and, and love. So that's that's often one of the topics I, I discuss a lot. And I believe I'm passionate about that. Uh, even to a point of where I know this is about poetry, so um, I have different gifts. So one of them is, is writing. That's how I ended up writing the book. Uh, so currently, I've been uh, working on this stage play called Happily Never After. Uh, I haven't made it public yet, but uh, it, it's one of the gifts that, that I do have. So when we're talking about topics and uh, love, this uh, stage play, which uh, 
maybe it's in the works. So I don't really have a date. That's why I hadn't made it public yet. But I'm talking about how, you know, how movies and movies you see two people falling in love and then they fall out of love and the woman leave him. And then at the end of the movie, he running through an airport trying to stop her from catching the plane. She done bought the ticket for it. And he's like confessing his love to her saying, look, I love you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Can you not catch this flight to California to go to your dream job and just really please stay here with me? And then she decides not to catch the plane, go back with him. They get on this white horse and go back home. And then the credit is rolling. And you see, they live happily ever after. So I, uh, I was, I, I believe God put it on my spirit to talk about the happily never after. The stuff people don't really discuss or the things that movies really don't show. Like what, what really happened after the happily ever after? Like what, what's the never? What, what are you really not telling me? What, what is this really despicable? You know, so, so that's, that's one topic I can say. I really, I'm really big on um, love and relationships and having a, a personal relationship with Christ is definitely one of those things. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can tell. And, um, and, and the the show is is definitely about poetry, but it's about art and writing and and expression. And it sounds like you're covering all of those spectrums. So uh, you you you've just kind of slick made it public, but you know at, mm. at least at least right. people's interests are piqued in what you're coming up with next. So mm-hmm. that that sounds like a very good move there. And yeah, a lot of people are looking for that that real love they're trying to find out what is it supposed to be like it especially if you've never seen it modeled in Mm -hmm. your own right 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 so people are going to kind of have okay well well real love equals a dude giving me money or real love equals you know a a a girl being you know intimate you know and you know and and it's a whole lot of different things but you know we got to understand that real love is trust is can i depend on you will you be clutch can can i you know are you going to be 10 toes down so i mean we you know those are some of the things and then even the bible tells you what real love you know real love is patient right wow see see so you kind of you know, we understand Jay Z got a blueprint, but I got a, a bigger blueprint. Now. Come on, come on. He, he's gonna help you put it together, but you gotta pick up the Bible. You gotta absolutely read gotta read it. So that, absolutely, that, that's good there. And w- with all of these different gifts, and you very multi talented guy, mm-hmm. who are you reaching? Who who are you hoping to reach with with your with your writing, your rhyme? and your book and your stage play um preferably um the youth the youth because i understand they are the next generation behind us um so <laughs> the the young people coming up behind me um that, that's who i'm that's that's number one uh who i'm hoping to to reach um including my daughter because i understand that one day you know she'll be in this position to where um even now you know she's in a position to where you know, people are looking at her life and being encouraged by her. So when she get um, a certain age, she'll be doing the same thing that I'm doing now. Um, it, it's a, it's all about the upcoming generation because I understand that uh, they are next. You know, they are the future. So why not invest in them? You know, we invest in them and that, you know, that, that makes our future even brighter because some of these youth, you know, they will strive to be presidents, uh, governments, doctors, um, whatever whatever they strive out to be and they would be in positions to help other people you know so we don't want to plant negative seeds in in the youth uh because we have you know um negative firemen negative policemen negative just everything you know so so they are the future so i would say uh the youth the youth definitely and and you you said you said a big you said a big word there so bombs are just kind of going off of my head here it it really is about making that investment and pouring into the people behind us because it, it's it is almost like planting a seed so you know you if you plant seeds now 
you'll have that 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 nourishment that that seed can provide later you know you'll have that mm -hmm. apple or that that turnip green or that carrot mm -hmm. you know so so if you plant that seed you can you can feed off of that nourishment later so just like you're putting in seeds of of you know how to be you know a good a good christian young lady of you know how to be positive in negative situations you're planting that seed in your daughter and in yourself and and people are feeding off of that knowledge and and the more you stay open to god the more you be a vessel to him the more the more he's going to pour into you and that way you can minister to other people so i i can see a very very good link of of you affecting youth in that way with different mediums, this medium, your book and, and your stage play. So it's, it's kind of like you got, you got your map, you know, you got all your tentacles going out there to really affect. Absolutely. Uh, so from here, you know, we, we keep talking about the book and I really want to get into that discussion. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your book, the title, and, and, and what caused you to want to, to create this masterpiece. Oh, wow. Um, now, I'm, I'm definitely excited to talk about it. Um, the book is called Against All Odds. My mom told me a few years, uh, may God rest her soul, a few years ago that I should write a book. Uh, she created, she started a Facebook. I was like, oh, my God, my mama got a Facebook. You know how you feel when your mom gets it. I'm like, Goodness, you know, but I mean, it wasn't a bad goodness. I'm like, man, my mom got a Facebook. So uh, this was before I got saved. So she probably started her Facebook 2011, uh, exactly. And uh, when she got on there, she was seeing a lot of different posts I would make. And it was a lot of stuff about life, and, you know, how to handle negative. See, I probably didn't even know what I was talking about some of the time, you know. But through experience, I would post, you know, just, just my... Uh, my outlook on life and she, my mom would see that because we was friends on Facebook and she was like boy you need to write a book and I was like wow it was confirmation because I had been thinking about writing a book but when this comes from your own mom you're like okay maybe it is true so for years I've uh I've had it in me to write a book uh but I just kept putting it off because it was always that thing you know I, I didn't see I didn't see it you know, I didn't see nobody write a book in the family. The books that I see are books by famous people or, you know, people that I don't even know. So how can I do something that I've never seen? Might go back to what you said, you know, how can I do something that I've never seen modeled before? Or, or, or is it possible? Uh, so for a lot, of, a, a lot of years, since 2011, I've procrastinated. To be honest, I've procrastinated uh, my thinking my thinking had got me out of writing books several times. And I, I started, but I, I didn't finish or I would finish. And I'd be like, well, you know, this ain't enough. It's not a good idea. So a lot of times I found myself using excuses as why not to uh, publish the book, why not to put it out. Uh, my own thinking had really uh, self-sabotage. It was self-sabotage a lot. Uh, and I would tell people it was procrastination. But another guy was like, you know, uh, maybe it was that. And also maybe it was, it was, you know, God's time. Maybe it wasn't time to, you know, uh, put the book out yet. So I had these different, I, I wrote like I had five different drafts. You know, I had one book called Life Itself I was writing, another book called, uh, I can't remember, but it, it was it was several drafts that I had um, of the book. What would it be called? And I just wrote. Um, so years later, leading up to now, I wrote this book called Against All Odds, which is uh, this book. I don't know if you see it, but uh, this is the book here. It's called Against All Odds. And it talks about my life, the way I grew up, uh, the struggle, where I came from, uh, just how I lived. And, uh, just me dropping out of 12th grade. I was making awesome grades uh, my senior year. I was very focused, but also I had those distractions like relationship, women, uh, music. I wanted to be a big time uh, rap artists because it go back to what I was sharing um, earlier in the interview. I was I was raised off of this rap music, so I wanted to I wanted to be that what I saw on TV. I wanted to be the rapper with the chain, with the money, with the cars, with the house. Uh, me and my twin, we wanted to be what we saw, and um, so that 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 stopped me from 
pursuing my education. I was making good grades, 3.0 grade point average. I was really focused, but distractions had got me off track. And I ended up going back to school and graduating, um, earning my high school diploma years later as an adult. Uh, so I talk about overcoming the odds of dropping out of school, having a daughter out of uh, wedlock at the age of, I believe I was 21 years old and um, wasn't married. And I'm like, wow, I didn't, my father got tragically killed. So now I have to become this father that I didn't necessarily see in the household. I mean, we had a father, but, you know, he left. So it's how do I model this thing that that I didn't fully get to embrace and see um, in the house? I mean, I saw it, but I still didn't get those principles of how do you co-parent or, you know, uh, what, what do you do uh, when she's going through these different phases of life or, you know, taking classes on, on parenthood because I, I didn't, I didn't see that extra, um, I didn't see that model in the house fully. You know, my brothers and sisters had their parents, but they wasn't around 24 seven. So it talks about just overcoming those odds, overcoming the odds of, um, will my daughter love me? You know, will my daughter, fully know who I am, will she know that I love her, will she know that that I'm here every step of the way. So there's so many eyes stacked up against me, even going to getting saved and, you know, uh, my struggle in the faith and just, just overcoming that. So many different obstacles, uh, being engaged, overcoming a failed engagement uh, in my life uh, almost two years ago, and just, just what that looked like for me in, in my life now, you know, put to putting out the book. To releasing two uh, Christian gospel rap albums, so I talk about all of these things uh, in the book. It's a, it's an awesome, interesting read, and then even putting a letter to my daughter at the end of the book. So when she get older, she can read my book and know that wow, you know my my dad was even thinking about me in the midst of and if she's feeling down or feeling like she's not worthy enough, you know. Of course, she got God, but then she can read this book and look at the letter that I wrote to her and go wow, or even for her to know that whatever she put her mind to, she can do it as well. If she's facing the odd in life, she can overcome to, okay, my dad wrote a book, then I can do something that, or if she want to start her own business or whatever she want to do when she get older, she can know just based off the simple fact that my dad wrote a book, I can do whatever I can put my mind to as well. Wow. you Wow. You just said a lot. Mm. I'm, and I'm, I'm just trying to absorb it. And mm. I've, I'm excited. Actually, I'm I'm not too big of a reader. Mm. Um, like I'll read for school and stuff, but I'm actually geeked about the book now. Like I'm wow. I'm ready to get a copy and and I well I I mean, I'm so interested in people's stories and how people mm. how people get started and 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 different different things that they've had to overcome. I've always been fascinated by that. And and to me, I'm I see you on Facebook all the time, but I, but to me, I'm meeting you for the first time and, and uh, I'm just like wow I I didn't even know you was going through all of that and and that right. that opens up my mind because I meet a lot of people that mm -hmm. opens up my mind to like you never know you know who's you know you never know what a person is is really going through so mm -hmm. uh we're we're getting close to the to the end of the show and I, I want I want you to let people know um, when the book is coming out. Do you have any events coming up? And then how can they contact you? Um, I have um, the book is releasing November sixteenth, two thousand nineteen, which is next month. Uh, the event <laughs> uh, I have a flyer uh, on my page. You can reach me on Facebook at Damian Griffin. Uh, my Instagram is at the chose DG the chosen one. So it's spelled out um, exactly as I'm saying the DG the chosen one. Um, so Instagram and Facebook are really the main two uh, platforms that I do use. Um, if you're looking for my album, uh, Chosen, Part 1, DG Chosen, uh, you can look it up on Instagram, uh, Spotify. You can find it on iTunes or any major uh, media platform. You can find my first album on there uh, if you're looking for it as well. But the books will be available uh, for pre-order in about a week. Uh, you can pre-order the books. Uh, I put I post a link and I'll live for that as well. But uh, the book Against Our Odds will be out November the sixteenth. Definitely. Well, guys, please look for this man's book. Get the pre-release. I'm excited about it. 
you know, not a big bookworm and I'm, I'm looking for it now, but um, we are closing the show. So for anybody out there that does not have a personal relationship with God, we just want to lead all of you in a sinner's prayer. You don't have to chant or meditate or anything like that. It's very simple. And you can just repeat after me, uh, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. And on the show, we believe that if you prayed that simple prayer, you've been born again. We would ask that you would get into a Bible-based church. Keep God and Christ as the first place in your life, and he will take you to places you've never even dreamed of. Once again, we want to thank W. YTV7 for giving us poets, us artists, stage play writers uh, this platform to share the beautiful message of Christ and what he's doing for us and what he can definitely do for you. So I am Jessica Crenshaw. That is the the T-H-E Damian Griffin and this is Poetry Worldwide where we are giving artists a voice. Are you ready to be heard?